Dear students, in this part of the case study, we will look at how to create an integrated quantitative measure to compare the results that we obtained after matching MS1, MS2 and theoretical spectrum data with the experimental counterparts. MS1 and MS2 provided us with the intact protein mass and the peptide sequence tags respectively and that this information was employed to create a candidate protein list that was further used in the theoretical versus in silico uh, versus in vitro experiment data. Towards creating a quantitative measure, let's take a look at the scoring scheme that we have previously described. So if the score of the experimental data versus the theoretical data for MS1 is to be computed, then simply you take the difference between the experimental mass and the theoretical mass of the proteins. So if this number is small, then it means there is a good chance that the experimental protein is the same as the protein that you are currently looking at from the database. So if this number is large, then it means that this error is large and this number would become small. So therefore, you will get a small score for the MS1 data. Let's take a look at an example protein. This is the protein that we are working on in this case study. So you can simply compute the molecular weight of this entire protein by simply adding up the molecular weight of each amino acid and you can plug this value here, theoretical mass, and you can obtain the experimental mass from your mass spec or MS1. So in this way you can score all such proteins and the ones with a large score, they are of course bound to be close to your protein that you're trying to identify. Second step would include the peptide sequence tag score. In the peptide sequence tag score, so if you are obtaining longer peptide sequence tags, then it means your score is going up. However, if the RMSC or the root mean squared error of generating these peptide sequence tags is large, then the score should go down. So therefore, it is there in the denominator. So let's take a look at the example protein that we are working with. So if you have three amino acids in the peptide sequence tag that were formed by C1, C2 and C3, then the length would be plugged in, which in this case will be simply 3 and the RMSC will be the error of the MS2 peaks with the mass of the amino acid. So if M or methionine its mass minus the MS2 peak that is reporting is small, then RMSE would be small. So this is important because this will help you to look at the quantity and the quality both of the peptide sequence tags. So in this way you can score the peptide sequence tags for this case study and as a last step you have to compare the theoretical and experimental masses. So the same protein that we are working with, what you do is you generate all the possible theoretical spectra, right? And then you compare them with the experimental data that I'm going to draw here. You would know that the experimental data would be smaller in number as compared to the theoretical peaks. So this is your experimental data and this is your theoretical data. So the number of peaks in the theoretical data will be larger than the number of peaks in the experimental data because in the experiments several sites within the protein or peptide backbone will not be fragmented. So all you have to do is to just compare these peaks together, all of them, and just count how many peaks from the theoretical spectrum they match with the experimental spectrum. So in this way you keep a count and you convert that into a score. So dear students, these three counting schemes or scoring schemes give you an overview of the contribution that is coming in from MS1, MS2 and the in silico versus experimental 
spectrum comparisons. So, if you integrate all of them into a single big scoring system, then you can of course have your candidate protein list that is very uh, inclusive of these different parameters and you can have a high quality search result.